those kind of transitions. We keep going back to the idea of getting underneath our opponent's hips and using that, that leverage point to take them down, take them over, move around them. It's penetrating, getting underneath to where we have their balance and their base and their center of gravity is under our control. That's a big point of the shot. That's what gives you a lot of, a, a lot of the leverage from the shot is you're getting underneath. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. So we talked about go, going to the seated guard and using the seated guard to get control of that, get control of that balance. We talked about going to the uh, setting the table, we're rotating around, fighting for the single leg. So that's, those are a couple of ways that you can start using that principle to improve your position. So the butterfly guard, as much as we think about it as, as a sweeping guard, is a way to do that. So if Daryl's kneeling, skip right to here. Yeah. So if Daryl's kneeling, I have a butterfly hook. I can get my underhook. I can get control of the wrist. I can start sweeping and elevating here. Right. Very simple concept. Really basic concept. Most people are familiar with the butterfly guard, at least on a, uh, a fundamental level. So Daryl stands up. So if I'm playing a seated guard and Daryl's standing, I can use a butterfly hook just in a different way. Now, this is called a stakeout. So a stakeout is a technique I picked up from. Uh, you know, back in my white belt days, I was really obsessed with Eddie Bravo stuff. Um, I don't play much with the rubber guard anymore, but the things like the stakeout have been a big part of my game. I still use them as a tool a lot, even though I'm not playing a lot of the, a lot of the more uh, Tenth Planet, what Tenth Planet's really known for, because um, my knees are atrocious, they're a mess. So the this, this stakeout hook, though, has been very useful for me over, over the years. Even though I've kind of transitioned to more of a Marcelo game, this has been a good way to uh, bridge that gap for me, so make that transition into more of a butt scoop guard. So I play this stakeout in here. I'm just using the arch of my foot here, setting it on top of Daryl's and flaring my toes. I'm getting inside, nice butt scoot posture, chest forward, head up, hugging the leg nice and tight, hugging his knee to my chest. I don't want any space here. If there's space, Daryl has mobility, and I, I lose leverage. So here's where I want to be. I'm looking up, that's going to keep my posture nice and strong. If my head goes down, it's very easy for Daryl to smash my head. Yeah, and I start getting crunched pretty quick. So I'm in here. Now, since this is a, so I'm thinking this is a butterfly hook, it might not be in his thigh, Daryl might not be kneeling, but I have the same kind of uh, attachment to my opponent where I'm hooking a leg. It might not be here, but I have the same attachment and I can use it the same way. I can use the lift. So this is a strong leverage point for me. So I'm in this position. If I get Daryl's sleeve, this is setting me up for my butterfly sweep, just like I was doing from, uh, just like I'd be doing from if Daryl was kneeling. So I can start rocking onto my side, turn onto my side, pull his posture down, elevate, get the takedown. Now from here, I can just pinch his knee to the mat. So I'm kneeling on this leg here. Step, I get my basic pass. It's a very simple technique. Um, it's, a, it's a very uh, it's a very intuitive technique once you play with it. It's something that you can overlook very quickly because you forget that you have a butterfly hook. You might think it's you think it's a totally different position again, but because the space is expanded, right? But if we, if we collapse it back down, it's still a butterfly guard. If I get a sleeve, I have a nice tight underhook control. He's controlling that leg's underhook, remember? I can use that to get my butterfly sweep, really expand my game.